Thank you, Vicky. It's a privilege for me to be part of this initiative. I do believe uh, weight stigma and weight bias are fundamental issues, uh, perhaps the most important issue for us to address if we really want to effectively tackle the uh, problem of obesity. Now, um, I'm here to speak about why um, raising awareness of stigma and weight discrimination um, is important, but it's not enough uh, to address this issue. The reason why this is the case is because uh, as a person, as a surgeon, I, I think it's very important to understand uh, and study problems or, or conditions when it comes to medicine, understand their um, causes in order to be able to address them effectively or to cure them and to eradicate them if we want. So if we want to eradicate the problem of stigma, it's so important to understand uh, what, the, what the cause of stigma is, where does it come from, um, why uh, it's so prevalent. Now, as every form of bias, uh, weight bias and the resulting stigma, um, it's largely due to um, lack of knowledge. Uh, this is the case for all sort of uh, other things. And there are other reasons and other factors that play a role. But there's something specific and special about the issue of weight stigma that makes it different than other things. Uh, and I think it's because of the way we um, understand the relationship between lifestyle and weight issues and obesity. Now, if you take um, an example from other conditions or diseases that are clearly associated with lifestyle, for instance, cancer uh, or trauma, uh, and uh, other um, the many diseases that are that have an association with uh, choices we make in our life. Well, the difference between those other diseases, say cancer, for example, and obesity, is that no matter what the cause of uh, cancer is, no matter whether or not there was smoking, heavy smoking uh, in the background, or or, or any other um, predisposing factors that has to do with lifestyle choices. Once people get cancer, uh, we do have sympathy uh, for them because we know that without medical help, without our um, uh, support, they can't undo cancer. When it comes to obesity, we lack that uh, understanding. We think obesity is linked to lifestyle uh, choices, which is not different than uh, for cancer, if you wish. But here with obesity, there is something special. There is this um, misconception that no matter how severe obesity is, people could actually undo, undo obesity at their will. Uh, it would just take a little bit of commitment, a little bit of effort, uh, and if they don't succeed, just try a little bit harder. So is it true that that's the case? Is it true that you can undo obesity as you wish? Well. Uh, all scientific evidence shows us that that's not the case. Uh, that when you have severe obesity, it's difficult to lose weight and sustain weight loss because our body weight regulation, our sy the system that regulates body weight actually fights back. Uh, it's meant and it works by maintaining uh, what we call homeostasis. Basically, our body tries and, uh, to keep the, our weight within a narrow range pretty much like our body does with our body temperature and, and, and other um, vital uh, parameters. Every action we make to change these parameters are countered by uh, other actions that the body puts in place through a, a mix of hormonal and other mechanisms that, of course, are not under the control of our willpower. Now, we know that for sure from scientific research. But the narrative that we still have about obesity has not incorporated that part of science. So we still think you can undo obesity even in the face of evidence showing that that's not the case. Now, we recently um, ran a survey, an international survey um, uh, with um, many four countries, uh, United States, um, uh, UK, Australia, and New Zealand where we try to, und to understand exactly what is the main uh, cause of uh, weight stigma. We, asked, we used a, a questionnaire which scores the level of stigma. Uh, it's a validated uh, stigma score. And we looked at how 
um, stigma, stigma score uh, correlates with how people, individuals uh, that responded to this questionnaire answered questions related to beliefs about obesity or attitudes towards uh, people with obesity or treatments for obesity, et cetera, et cetera. So what we found was um, uh, interesting. Not surprisingly, of course, uh, people who tended to have higher stigma score also tended to believe that obesity is associated with um, um, uh, gluttony or, uh, or in individual um, uh, lack of um, uh, uh, energy in maintaining healthy lifestyles. And that goes with what we already knew. Uh, but what was quite intriguing was the fact that there was a strong correlation between stigma scores, so the higher the stigma, in other words, and the response to question, is obesity entirely curable by just um, deciding to do so, by self-directed in, um, intervention, the self-directed lifestyle uh, changes? Those who responded yes to this question tended to have higher stigma which means that if those of us who think or tend to think that it's easy uh, to undo obesity just by deciding to do it uh, and by doing it yourself, in other words, you don't need help to undo obesity, well, those people who have those beliefs tend to have much higher stigma, um, weight bias and stigma. So it's important at this point to address this uh, issue by uh, exposing the gap between uh, stigma uh, and um, science, but most importantly by exposing the gap between this narrative of obesity being easily done and undone by deciding to do so and the reality which science has shown over a time and, uh, and time again that in fact that is not so easy, that is not so simple, that reality of weight regulation uh, the reality of weight variation is completely different. Um, so uh, that's why it's important, in my opinion, to act. It's important to not only raise awareness, but to address this. And each of us can do it because uh, every time we hear a narrative of obesity that is incoherent with the science, a narrative of obesity that makes it simplistically easy for people to undo it, to resolve obesity, and uh, we know that that's not the case, we should intervene and correct that narrative. With that uh, view, uh, we organized an international consensus conference calling to the table the major obesity organizations, the most um, authoritative scientists in the field of obesity clinicians, uh, to just sit down and say, if the narrative of obesity is this, what does the science of obesity tell us? If there is a gap, especially along that a particular issue of the ability to reverse, undo, if you wish, or cure obesity by yourself, well, we should say that clear. We should speak up. Uh, we as scientific community should speak up and say, that is not correct. That is inaccurate. Uh, unfortunately, so far, I don't think uh, the society, the media, etc., have heard of the scientific community speaking with one voice about this. So it was very important for us with this consensus conference to um, really speak with one voice, to say the scientific community has looked at the narratives of obesity as uh, and is knowledgeable of the science around uh, body weight regulation. And here is what we think. We think this narrative is completely inconsistent, completely incoherent with what science has shown us over the last uh, several decades. And based on that conclusion, we pledged and we asked many organizations, scientific journals, uh, hospitals, academic centers to join us in this pledge. We pledged to correct that narrative wherever it happens. We pledged to address this issue of stigma of obesity um, at its very root cause, which is again the misunderstanding of the ability of individuals to uh, resolve obesity by themselves. It's uh, inaccurate to say that obesity is entirely due to lifestyle choices. We know that very well. There are many other elements to it. But maybe even more damaging is this belief that um, obesity can be cured, resolved, uh, completely um, removed 
if we just decided to do so. That is, uh, uh, that is not the case, and I think uh, it's imp it was important for scientists and clinicians to actually say that clear and loud. So that was a, an action. Of course, it doesn't end there. We have to continue to address the issue. We have to continue as a medical community um, in our individual interactions with others, as well as in uh, more institutional interactions with other um, uh, bodies and, um, and uh, public health uh, agencies and everybody that has a say around obesity in our society. That is time in 2020 to actually align science with the narrative of obesity. Without that, unfortunately, I think we are not going to see much progress uh, in uh, fighting stigma, but uh, likewise, we're not going to see any progress in fighting obesity more broadly. Thank you.